Oh, we have speakers? Okay, well, never mind. I'm wrong. All right, so um, we uh, now will take speakers on the next workshop will be the uh, conservatory school. So the way the board will operate here is the, the speakers will be allowed to speak to us. For, uh, to, you have up to three minutes to speak with us. Uh, you will not get any response from us directly during that portion of the, of the uh, meeting, but uh, the board members will then have a workshop and we'll be able to ask questions and certainly things that you bring up will probably be discussed by the board members. So I'll call three at a time if you'd come up to the table. Well, actually, since there's so many microphones up there, I'll call all of you that are on the list, and then you can make your way up there. Uh, Joseph Makins, a, a student, Lisa Butler, Sophia Salazar, a student, Leslie Kant, Serenity Frederick, and Mont... Uh, I'll screw this one up. Uh, Miss Smith. How's that? Any one of you can start, but just please state your name for the record when you begin to speak, and then watch the clock there in front of you. It's set for three minutes. And pull the microphones very close so we can hear you well. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Lisa Butler. Thank you so much for um, letting us address the board today. We really appreciate the opportunity um, to continue this discussion. You've heard a lot of parent voices, and we won't make you listen to us again today because we have some uh, more important voices in the house, we feel, today to really share our story. Um, the fact that we're here today means that you heard our voice, and we truly appreciate that. And now we're anxious for you to add your voice to the to very important discussion because we're all about voice at TCS. We're all about student voice. We're about encouraging students to find it and helping them articulate it. And so what you'll hear from our amazing students today is how we do that and why it's different. And those are important core values at TCS like project-based learning that is collaborative and authentic. It's not the same as doing a project. Project-based learning brings collaboration, and um, that is where they learn to share their student voice. Um, it's a place of innovation, and to us, innovation is vastly different. It's not just painting the same box a different color over and over. It's asking questions like, why do we use this box anyway? Um, it's having music as an integral part of the day, not just an after-school club or an afterthought. It's woven throughout everything we do, and I know that's, that's important to the kids, too. Um, and it's making sure at TCS that we don't just prepare kids for the real world, but we ask them to use their voice to create the world that they want to live in. And that is what we do differently at TCS, vastly differently. So they just want to continue to learn that way. And so at this point, I will humbly quiet my voice so that you can hear theirs. Hello. You can just go in the same. Good. Say your name and your name go ahead and speak. Well. Yep. <laughs> Hold it close. Hello, my name is Mackins. I'm part of the conservatory school. Yeah. I mean, good afternoon. Good. I mean, good afternoon. I want to tell you about a boy that would always get in trouble and clown around all the time. He couldn't get attention, I mean, attention through smartness, so he had to behave badly to get the attention. A big thing he struggled with in the classroom was like being able to read, write, and follow the, the class. He had no interest in learning or understanding the assignments. Now, each grade level became harder and harder for the boy. He felt trapped in a bubble, in a bubble he couldn't get out. The way he saw everyone getting and understanding Understanding everything sucked for him because he couldn't. Well, that student is me. Now, I always loved music. That was one thing I was really good at and loved to learn about. 
Music opened doors for me because it got me here at TCS. Now, TCS helps me, helped me overcome everything I was going through from my behavior to my disabilities of learning and understanding what's going on in the classroom. The staff and the environment here changed me at TCS. The teachers made me feel that I was capable more than I thought I was. PBL, heartness, music all played a part in my turnaround. Now, I would say if I went to a different school, I would still be doing my old habits, but even worse. I know for a fact that other schools don't offer the same opportunities like us. Now, my name is Mackins. I'm a student, um, athlete, and musician, and more importantly, part of the family here at TCS. TCS is a comfortable learning environment where people, where the staff and the people make you want to come to school and make things more enjoyable. The teachers here get to know everyone, and PBO makes us work in teams and actually really think deeply about the challenges that it's going through the world. We use a style of learning called Harkness, which allows us to think deeply about the text and help us communicate ideas with our peers. Both of these things give us life skills by learning how to work together, think critically about through multiple situations. I used to struggle with reading and communication, communicating with other people. Harkness helped me with my reading dis um, disability as well as talking to others. A Harkness discussion to me, is, to me is being able to be free to share any idea while you being judged and you having peers to help you understand the content that is given. Student collaboration was also a weak spot for me, but now it's not. I excel at being able to be independent and to stay focused. Now, if I look at my old self, I would ask, how is this even possible to get where I am? Where I am? The reason is, is the TCS family that I'm part of. Now, the reason we need this high school is because we need to give these opportunities and experiences to the other students like me. Thank you. My name is Sophia Salazar. I am in seventh grade and I have been going to TCS for eight years. I am a student and a musician and I have been playing the cello for six years. To me, TCS means family. The strong connections and relationships I've made here have built me as a person. At TCS, we do project-based learning, Harkness discussions, and student collaborations, all which help me discover my interests and what I like to do in the future, as opposed to just learning from a textbook. Project-based learning helps us share a voice. We'll usually learn about an issue or a controversial topic regarding our community or everyday problems. We make projects to spread awareness or a point of view. Earlier this year, we made five-minute documentaries talking about issues hurting South Florida's ecosystem. Many students, including me, discovered we enjoyed filming. Last year, my group built bridges out of wood, and now engineering is something I would consider doing in the future. TCS has presented me with various opportunities and learning experiences. With help from teachers, me and a couple of students got into Duke TIP, a program where students can explore challenging work to thrive academically. Many students participated in a school bus media contest where we made underage drinking prevention posters. Two students at TCS were chosen as finalists. Lastly, TCS has allowed me to travel to different places. At my time at TCS, I have gone to DC, Virginia, and various nature parks in South Florida. This is what I think makes TCS all the more special. I think we need a TCS high school to continue this passion us students have for the arts and an amazing learning experience. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Serene D. Frederick. I am a black African American. I, sp I speak English. I am a student, a musician, a public speaker, a one of four volleyball captains here at TCS, and an overall creative person. TCS is a home for me. It's a place that when I come to school, I am going to be surrounded of, of, around people full of love and care. TCS is such a home to me, I never want to leave it. You can ask my mother, no matter how sick I am or how hurt I am, I still don't want to leave that school. The foundation that's built there, the culture, the positive atmosphere, it'll make you feel the same way. At TCS, we have this unique thing called PBL. It's where students have a driving question and they use the elements of art, math, science, ELA, and technology to share their idea in front of people in our community. For example, last semester, me and my partner chose to speak upon police brutality against black men and women. I know that's not something you usually hear about in school, but that's what's different about TCS. They're willing to talk about things that most people are afraid or uncomfortable to talk about. It's all to create a better future. If we don't step up and make this train, who will? 
At TCS, I have been presented a great number of opportunities, such as learning an instrument, yeah, such as learning an instrument. As my music teacher has said to me plenty of times before, an instrument can help grow bro both sides of your brain. Playing an instrument strengthens memory power and hand-eye coordination. As a person that's very athletic, that comes in very handy. TCS is a world of opportunities. As a diverse school, we are able to learn from each other as students by understanding each other's cultural backgrounds and vast ethnic, oh, cultural differences and vast ethnic backgrounds. In addition, we have opportunities in the music industry. Being at TCS for the last six years, I've encountered well over 100 famous string, brass, and wind musicians. I've learned their backgrounds and how they made it to the place they are at today. TCS has grown me to be a socially active citizen in bettering my community. TCS has grown me to the point where when I set my mind on something, I do it, and I don't stop until I achieve it. Every year, students are offered to travel all over the US. For example, we have traveled to New York, San Diego, Georgia, Virginia, and Virginia. While visiting these places, we have been to museums and different colleges. Having these experiences gave children who weren't interested in attending college before a different view. Because they were able to see what type of opportunities they can get out of college. There's no school like TCS that gives students that opportunity to see further than what they've seen before. If these statements before didn't explain why TCS needs a high school, I don't know what will. TCS is a home that every person needs. We shouldn't deny a person of a life full of opportunities just like TCS. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ruby Freeman. I'm in eighth grade. I've been at TCS since fifth grade up until which point I was homeschooled. I play violin almost for 10 years now and I love to read, write, and swim. To me, TCS is a unique learning environment. It's helped foster my love of learning and show me so many different kinds of ways to approach the ideas of learning itself, like PBL, like they all mentioned, um, and through Harkness discussion, through exhibition. It's helped grow my public speaking skills, which is coming in handy right now. <laughs> uh, and through different kinds of discussions, um, the type of work that we do where we can communicate with other people and express what we've learned in a passionate way. Through TCS, I've had the opportunity to go to New York City, to go to California. I've been able to be in an orchestra, which I never would have been able to do if I had, hadn't gone to TCS. I've been able to reach out to local organizations like the Reef Institute through PBL projects, and I've gotten used to interviewing people and having a good time communicating and collaborating through my learning. I've been able to excel in music and be more aware of who I am and what values and things I appreciate and who I strive to be. Uh, I've made so many great relationships. My teachers have been so supportive of me. I've had teachers over at my house. I love hearing about different stories that kids have with their teachers that I've never heard about with other schools, and I really appreciate that about TCS because your teachers can make or break your school experience and really who you are as a person. Like, school is a very important developmental phase, and I just think that TCS has really affected me in a positive way, which I'd love to share with other people through high school. Uh, so one of, that's one of the reasons why I think we need a TCS high school. Uh, all the skill building, all the real world hands-on learning styles that are applied through elementary school and through middle school at TCS, if we could take that through high school, that would be, for me, beyond ideal. I'd love to continue learning that way and being able to express my passions and views through, <laughs> excuse me, that style of learning. And I'd love to be able to share that with other people. Um, when I went and I toured High Tech High in California, and that's kind of the model for what we'd like the school to be, I, like you could feel the passion of the students and of the learning through the murals on the walls, through the way they spoke, and I want to be like that. I want, you know, students like me to be able to be like that, to experience, you know, a school like that. And personally, I'm a violinist, and when it comes to high schools, choosing high schools, a lot of times, for orchestral students, it seems like the only option is Dreyfus, and I feel like if we were able to integrate music programs and other arts programs, people um, like me could be able to pursue you know, their passion without feeling like they have to pass an audition or get narrowed down into one specific school, and I just think expanding the options for that would also be great, so um, that's my view on it, on why we need a TCS high school and what's special about it to me. Thank you. Good afternoon, board. My name is Montanish Smith. I am a new teacher at TCS. I believe 
um, amongst these participants, I'm the least of them. I come with um, over 15 years of experience in clinical social work and working with the most vulnerable children in our society and working, um, walking through the doors of TCS many years ago or a, a year or two ago through mobile crisis, I saw and felt immediately the voice of the children, immediately the culture that was created by a learning environment that fostered the individual child and their needs and their identity and their values and who they were. And, you know, for me, I thought, this can't be much different from what I do now as a social worker, supporting children, supporting families to find their supports to find their strengths and to have a place in society that they can find meaning, purpose, and value. Working with the most vulnerable population, I have been at places where, for our foster children, um, they felt displaced and had no identity. And for many of them, looking for a place to connect, looking for people to connect to when all they saw around them was displacement and uncertainty. I see with children of truancy, when I worked even with our local schools in Palm Beach County to support, um, support children that were, um, have disrupted normal settings of classrooms, um, I saw their strengths and I saw their need surpass behaviors. At the conservatory school, what I see there is an opportunity for individuals like those. Individuals that could not find themselves in the learning setting to gain an independence and to gain an identity outside the normal cultivated standards of, of education. At TCS, I believe that children are able to harness their full potential because they see themselves in the education. They see themselves thriving and learning. Um, I'm not the expert. They are, and in each of their voices I heard, I found myself and I found myself, I found my strengths, and I believe that's what the unique um, mission of TCS is really all about. It's about cultivating that child's independence and their identity in a broader world, in a broader society. Thank you. Hi, my name is Leslie Kant. I'm a parent of a first and fourth grader there. Um, I also volunteer. Um, I understand the strong desire for this music project-based high school, um, similar to High Tech High and what they're describing. I have children that are only getting older. Um, however, I would like this workshop to focus on how to accomplish this at a more appropriate location than at our Anchorage campus. Conservatory School was designed and built as an elementary school, is North Palm Beach Elementary, with an emphasis on early introduction to violin. The last five years, we had a choice opened up with middle school and then high school. Um, even with the reduction of the high school to a few students this year, we are at 136% over capacity at our school. Along with Calusa, we are the most over capacity school in the entire district, high school, middle school, or elementary. This year, our library was converted to a high school and is not available to our students. Now, we have some library shelves in the main entrance. It does not house the, the entirety or even a big portion of our library. Um, very limited time, children can come and check out books there, which means young children walk across the street to North Palm Beach Library. This is a short walk, but it is an unnecessary risk and time away from instruction. And if you don't get enough parent volunteers, that trip is canceled. This year, kindergarten, first, and second grade no longer have strings. It was taken away from them. 
Third grade is their first introduction to strings, and by fourth grade, you either are excelling at it or you move on to another instrument or vocals, which means the beginning of fifth grade, as you audition for these choice programs, these younger children no longer have the same opportunity that these kids sitting here today or that my older son has as a addition for this because they haven't been given the same, same opportunity, they're unprepared. The cost of having a choice program should not come at the expense of our younger children. It, the resources and space are just stretched too thin. I ask for support of this high school. Do, these are separate issues. I support this model of this high school, but at an appropriate location. I think that conversion, that discussions of conversions to a charter school is completely in, in, inappropriate. It should not even be on the table. And on future, I think we need to start talking about remedy of the overcrowding and how it's affecting the entire population. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, as the die has transitioned, first of all, thank you all for coming out today. Let's give our children another round of applause, please. <laughs> At this time, I would ask the Deputy Superintendent Keith Oswald, our Chief Operating Officer Wanda Paul, our Chief Finance Officer Mike Burke, and our Assistant Superintendent Dr. Peter Licata to come to the table. Um, thanks to the parents of this particular school who brought it to our attention several months ago, and also to our board member, Barbara McQuinn, and other board members who asked us to start looking at our current realities and to have a board workshop. That is the purpose of today's meeting, is just to lay the simple facts on the table as it relates to some of the physical structures and other pieces associated with the potential of a high school. Doctor, I mean, Deputy Superintendent, I turn it over to you now. Thank you, Dr. Fenoy, and good afternoon, board members. Yes, as requested by the board to discuss the conservatory school, and more particular, around the high school, we want to provide the board um, that opportunity today and then provide a little more context and background information of some of the challenges, opportunities with that. First, um, talking about the why, I think the students clearly articulated just recently the why and what occurs at TCS. Back in 2010, the music program was started under uh, Terry Stuper's leadership. Focus was to democratize instrumental music. At that time, the school was underutilized with 430 students. Uh, demographics there were 74 students of color, 9% white, it was 86% bringing reduced lunch. The music program was put into place to provide an excellent instrumental music program for all students, regardless of their ability to acquire an instrument or pay for private lessons. The Y includes pro providing opportunities in project-based interdisciplinary learning where students develop strong collaborative communication and critical thinking skills. <clears throat> TCS Music and Innovation Program developed to balance student experience in the arts and sciences, including access to en engineering industry certification. And we talk about the high school also to provide the ACE curriculum to really broaden the students' opportunity to have a college and career readiness uh, access uh, curriculum. Currently, TCS has 760 60 students. 110 of those students in the K-5 are choice students. A couple years ago, that number was up to approximately 250. As we discussed, it was under-enrolled as it becomes more popular. And in the next slide, we'll talk about how the choice seats at the K-5 level was reduced to one slot due to the increased demand in the boundary area. 192 of those students are in the 6-8. The proposal that we'll get into more details around 300 students for a uh, small high school concept, and you can see the racial breakup breakdown of those. And again, uh, these are the number of students in the last couple of years that applied under the K-5, and again, reducing that to one seat for K-5 most recently. At the middle school level, <clears throat> you can see the number of students who actually applied how many students actually qualified uh, based on that choice opportunity and that were actually assigned at the middle school level. And on this particular slide, you can see the, the students who attend TCS. Uh, the blue dots are elementary school age. The, uh, I guess that would be orange. Dot is the middle school age students, ranges 
from as south as uh, Boynton Beach, north to Jupiter, and as far west to Royal Palm, uh, with transportation provided. To Cuesta also. And to Cuesta. The enrollment at the conservatory, as you can see, the five-year enrollment here, for the K-5 students remain relatively flat, small increases, um, but relatively flat. Obviously, we can control for the 6-8. Um, and then you can see the total numbers there provided. With this proposed high school, you have to understand there'll be a very limited master board. Students will have to take a pres prescribed curriculum. It'll be a boutique school with key elements such as sports and clubs on a limited basis, keeping in mind that the curriculum and the, and the master board is an upfront measure for parents to understand that's what they're getting. Uh, it is a limited choice school. Remember, as it gets more popular, which we know that Ms. Stupas has been amazing at that. We cannot guarantee progression if a student is moving from middle to high. Uh, based on that exact program of study, if you look at the next slide, when we get to the next slide, you'll see that 21 positions will be needed for both middle and high school. This is based on the sample of the master schedule, which has some flexibility into it. Remember, there'll be nine middle school teachers and 12 high school uh, teachers based on the allocations. This is a sample, moving forward, this is a sample of the master schedule. There is some leeway in there. There are several uh, nuances you can make in there regarding honors and, and, and not honors in, in the science areas. But remember, there is engineering industry certifications in there, and this is going to be somewhat um, static as you maintain that number of teachers along with the master schedule. Again, the limited offerings for acceleration is existent, but there is opportunities for acceleration as well. Obviously, the challenges are scheduling. There's the difficulties of moving that many students uh, through high school with that little number and, and meeting the diverse learning styles of all those students. Uh, remember, multi-level certifications for teachers is always a concern or an issue as we move through. Mo many of those teachers will have to be teaching multiple subject areas. Support services are always a concern when you have the diverse learners as well. And again, I, I want to be clear that it would be limited in their sports programs and clubs but as we have in policy, students who are attending schools that don't have those sports will be able to attend the uh, sports programs at other schools. Okay, I just wanted to kind of take the board back a few years. We had uh, education resource strategies in our ERS a few years ago that come through our whole budget and looked how we were using resources. And one of the things they brought to our attention was that uh, when we have schools that operate with a relatively small enrollment, there's, a, there's what they dubbed a small school premium because it just it costs more to operate those schools because you're spreading kind of some fixed overhead costs over a fewer number of students. Uh, and when we move on and look kind of at the conservatory school and what this proposal might look like, please uh, we'll move ahead. Uh, just to give you some frame of reference, uh, we've shown here the average size of our elementary, middle, and high schools. So elementary typically have about 700 kids, uh, middle schools around 1,200, and high schools average at 2,300. This proposal would have the elementary school at 750, uh, 200 middle school students, and then 300 high school students. Uh, so it doesn't really fit our traditional mold. Uh, when we budget for our K-8 schools, what our practice has been to date is we really build it off the elementary allocation, and then we add some additional resources to help the school accommodate those additional grades. You know, may, we may do it one year at a time when they add sixth grade, seventh, and eighth. Uh, uh, for this school currently, the conservatory school, they basically get their standard elementary school budget and then we add on a teacher on special assignment or what we call a TOSA to help with some of the administrative functions of running a K-8 school. And other than a few other supplements that go along with the middle school grades, that's really all they've gotten above formula. Uh, when we look at this proposal going forward to incorporate the high school and potentially to have the high school at a, a second location, you start adding some cost. And some of this might be debatable. Uh, Right, currently I mentioned the TOSA, but if we add an assistant principal, I would need some clarification. Does the school retain that TOSA or can we then eliminate the teacher on assignment because the school would have two APs serving these students? Uh, so that could potentially mitigate some of these costs. Uh, extending the school treasurer and data processor to a year-round calendar, uh, you know, that's something I would work through with the school. Uh, currently an elementary school has to get over 1,300 students to get that third guidance counselor. Uh, so that, I think, is an additional cost. And then uh, I think, you know, Ms. Dr. Licata showed you that having 500 secondary students will generate 21 teachers because we have 
22, to, that's strictly running the, the math, the 22 to one for middle school grades and 25 to one for the high school grades. Um, adding those 21 teachers won't quite meet the needs of the schedule. They'll probably need two teachers on top of that to provide some of those uh, programs that they're offering. Uh, and then we haven't really got into yet what the transportation cost might be if we expand these choice programs. Uh, that's going to be dependent on how many kids take advantage of that service and where they're coming from. Uh, and then the custodial costs and the security costs may just grow with the size of the facility. So that, that's really just to give you kind of a handle on how the operation budget may have to increase to accommodate this type of program. So I wanted to talk about the feasibility study that was done. Uh, please understand that it was a draft study and really if you want to think of it in other terms, it was just a space study to see if we could fit a building on that particular space. What you see here is a satellite of the conservatory. What this uh, uh, depiction does not include uh, is it does not include the two temporary buildings that uh, we put on the site. Uh, the next uh, slide is uh, the existing site plan of the school. So I want you to kind of focus on that little open area to the left uh, uh, of the school. Next slide. So the intent of the feasibility study is to determine if the existing property could accommodate a new facility construction uh, for the proposed 9 through 12 capacity program. Uh, so we were trying to uh, figure out if we could site a new building on the existing spot, uh, site uh, with respect to the existing core. Core components are things like the media center, the library, the cafeteria, those common areas where the, where the kids go to for uh, other instruction and uh, so forth. And then we had to look at uh, on-site uh, storm uh, water drainage uh, and the enlargement of that. In addition, the amount of parking spaces we needed to uh, accommodate staff, existing staff visitors, and when you're talking high school, you're talking uh, high school drivers. We, had, we asked them to evaluate the possibility of constructing an expansion that might also remedy the overcrowding that uh, is currently happening at, at the site uh, for the pre-K through 8 program. And, and to see if we would actually be able to get uh, Depart uh, Florida Department of Ed uh, approval for a new building. As you know, we just went through an exercise with that for our uh, Boca Elementary School. Uh, and that was over about a year-long process uh, trying to get that school. This was a space avail availability study and not an educational delivery method study. It generally did not account for operational concerns and educational adequacy. Next slide. So the existing uh, capacity, I wanted to give you kind of a history of uh, the building. Originally designed uh, modernization of the North Palm Beach uh, Elementary School in 2012 uh, as a pre-K through five uh, campus with 753 student stations. Uh, standard school curriculum initially, arts program was added during the end of the design process. Uh, TCS modernization opened in 2014 with adjustments in enrollment for pre-K-8 with 753 student stations, as I said before. Uh, school design remained uh, pre-K-5 with no core expansion, and those are those common areas I mentioned before. And it was utilized and operated as a pre-K-8. Uh, the utilization ratio for pre-K-8 is at 90%, was at 90% of 753, which would be 678 student stations. Uh, and it's 718 with the rented portables, the two rented portables that we have on site, as I mentioned before. The current enrollment is 953. The utilization for pre-K through eight is at 136%. Um, TCS opened ninth grade in the fall of 20, uh, FY19 with an increase, increase to two, 803 student stations, uh, utilization ratio at 723. The projected pre-K-8 utilization is 141% uh, in five years, even with a significant, re even with a significant reduction in the K-5 uh, choice seats. So, you know, it's a very appealing school, a very popular school. 
and quite honestly, it's a good position to be in to have uh, our, our community want to go to the school. And so this is just one rendition that Harvard Jolly did. Uh, they were the architect that uh, put together the draft uh, study. And so you can see the, the parking area in brown, and then you can see a two-story addition uh, that is somewhere around a, a 32,000 square foot building. Next slide. And so this is another iteration of their work. You see the parking area. That parking area is currently would be on the current drainage that we have at the site. And this is kind of a split model where you have the high school uh, in the bigger building and the Miller School in the smaller building on site. So I wanted to do a pros and cons to kind of tell you uh, the situation as uh, the team, our team sees it. The feasibility analysis indicates that a maximum of 580 additional, additional student uh, stations uh, is broken down by 360 high school, 220 middle school, may be physically accommodated on site, as I said before, with the 32,000 square foot building, uh, and 100 parking spaces and related modifications to the existing facility site and infrastructure. It is necessary to also consider the 580 student uh, station count as the maximum, so there would be no room for expansion. Uh, given the other listed factors, the number of additional student stations may be limited to plus or minus 385 student stations. So this is just kind of a, a breakdown. And again, when Harvard Jolly was doing the report, uh, they were just putting numbers into it uh, this is a draft re report, so it's an unfinished product. Um, so the cons, um, here are some of the cons. Outside agency approvals required for the village site plan, uh, civil stormwater and parking. A traffic study is needed to include the impact on the existing neighborhood and surrounding neighborhood there. Uh, parking, parking, parent queuing, bus loop, et cetera. Uh, and then we have to consider the neighborhood concerns for traffic and building density and adjacency uh, that we have to anticipate. Uh, the existing facility is 10 acres. Typically, 15 acres is recommended for an elementary school and 25 acres for uh, K through five or K through eight school. Uh, the site as, as it, in its current configuration is undersized uh, to consider a high school expansion. Um, and then the site development must maintain the required floor area ratio of 0.35 or below. Uh, and then the expensive underground storm uh, chamber system under the paved area is necessary due to the smaller site area and increased density. Big upfront costs and increased maintenance, co maintenance cost is one of the other concerns. And then uh, this slide is uh, titled, The Stress That We'll Put on the Core Facilities. And so those facilities include the kitchen and dining. Uh, they'll be overutilized. Uh, we'll, we'll have to require modifications. Uh, feasibility study did not include any additional core spaces or expansion. And so currently their lunch periods uh, start at 9.45 to 12.30, and I believe they have about five uh, different lunch periods. Uh, the proposed additions uh, will eliminate most of the grassy play areas. And again, the biggest concern is as the school has the potential to grow, we don't have room to expand on that current site. Under uh, using design non-instructional spaces as instructional spaces, uh, which is uh, currently happening, and so you look at utilizing other spaces like teacher planning area, dining, teaching spaces to achieve flexibility. The estimated three-year planning, design, and construction schedule, there's no room on site really to provide the high school space with a permanent space. Uh, so we currently have two temporary buildings there that we have uh, children housed in. When we go into construction, if we were to consider that, we would have to find a location for those children to go. Uh, we would need that space uh, to, to uh, utilize the, the correct way to construct the building. Uh, initial project estimates on-site additions is approximately 13 million. Uh, is currently not included uh, in the capital plan. 
And 13 million, I think, is a low figure because when you start talking about underground uh, stormwater storage and, and all of that, uh, it has the potential to escalate the price. Uh, without expansion, the pre-K-5 boundary change would be necessary to relieve existing overcrowding unless, unless a 6 through 8 expansion was added or a 6 through 8 elimination of choice seats. Uh, the new capacity would be... Uh, 1264 or 99% utilization with no room for growth. And then again, uh, this is another hurdle that we would have to overcome. Uh, DOE approval, as I said previously, we went through this process with uh, uh, trying to get uh, 05C, the Boca Elementary School. One of the things that worked against us is that we, had, we have too much capacity across the district. We have about 30,000 student seats across the district and that limits our ability to do new construction. In addition, um, added uh, high school seats will impact the balance of the district capacity. As I said before, we have too much capacity at every level uh, and, and relief needed at other schools, so it would hinder our ability to provide relief. One of the projects that we're concerned about is Jupiter High School. Uh, we, we plan to uh, go to DOE approval for approval in 2019. And so it's already in the capital plan. It's one of those projects that we have to do something be, to relieve the overcrowding. And so I would be concerned uh, that we would put that project in jeopardy. Uh, so, next. And then, again, here are some possible solutions. Uh, Co-locate a 9 through 12 on another campus. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of the school, a school within a school. That's an option. And then close and poss possibly close and repurpose an under-enrolled middle school nearby. So those are the two op options that uh, we as a team uh, came up with. This time we'll turn it back over to the superintendent of the board for discussion and any questions that they may have. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. With Mrs. Whitfield and Ms. Brill and Mr. Shaw. Thank you. I, I just wanted to say um, a couple of brief comments. I had the opportunity to go and tour um, today with Ms. Butler. And um, I went over, I mean, I've been to the school a few times, but um, I went this morning, which I think, um, you know, I was able to really get a very fresh pers perspective on this amazing school. The first thing I want to say is, is compliments to Miss Stupas, because everywhere she goes, everything she touches turns to gold. Um, it is um, really an evident of her amazing leadership that People love going to school there. The other thing I'd like to mention is she also has teachers follow her religiously from school to school, um, which is an impressive duo to have both parents love you and teachers love you. So big compliments um, for that. Um, I think uh, this school is is kind of, I've been using this word a lot lately, but it's kind of a unicorn. It's so special. It's just one of those places where um, when you're there, everybody wants their children to go there. You walk through and think, oh my gosh, this is what I want my education to have been like. This is what I want every child's education to be like. The project-based learning really makes it a fun place to go to school and you're learning kind of almost accidentally, which um, is, is really what we want for our children. The other thing that they're doing is getting great scores and accomplishing the standards. So it's one of those things where um, we're doing everything we have to do and you're supposed to do, um, but in a way that that parents are very much enjoying, the children are enjoying. Um, I think all those things are great. A couple of things you guys mentioned that I would like to push back on. The first thing I'd like to say is that it is actually not a small school. I would argue it is way overcrowded. Um, I agreed with the, the parent that came up and, and mentioned that um, the five lunch periods to me is completely unacceptable. I, that is, it's a tiny, tiny cafeteria and having students start lunch at 9.45 um, is really breakfast. And I don't think that we're really doing a great job. The teachers have to then deal with students being hungry a few hours later. And, and that um, impacts you know time that we have in the classroom and impacts the teachers, the burden on the teachers. So I think that is, is a real challenge. Um, the other thing I'd like to say is, is I think the reason the parents are here is because of the way of learning, not the location. Um, I don't think we need to jam more students into that school and or take away play spaces, that would go against everything that I believe about schools is that we need outdoor 
space and time and the ability to get out of air conditioning sometimes. So I think putting them on that campus is too much, but I like the idea of going to a new location. The only problem is, is I don't know how we clone Terry. Um, so taking her and, and trying to have her cover two schools I think is too much. However, um, I do think there's probably opportunities to grow leadership um, that could teach like this. Personally, I would like to see this, leader, this type of programming not just at the conservatory school, but through Throughout the district. Um, I think we've touched on it. I know I've talked to some principals um, when I visited a few years ago. I spoke to them and I said, go to the conservatory and see what Ms. Stupas is doing because we should do this everywhere. Um, some of them have gone. They've taken some of these practices, but I don't think that they've taken it in such a big way that it has really had the effect that the conservatory has had. So though we are touching on it in other schools, I don't think we've really got the full culture um, in any of our other schools. There's a few that are, that are doing it, but I think the way she's doing it is really special. So how can we spread that out there? The last thing I wanna say, and then I'll let my colleagues speak because I know there's a lot of, um, of comments on this, um, is really that the, if we can move it to a new location, I asked Ms. Butler today when I was there, um, how would you feel about moving to a new location? She was fine with it, which I think, um, you know, and we could take some more understanding from the people that are here. But I think we could take that to a new location, we could develop this, and it could be the next space for the North County to really have this type of programming. We know that this is popular. We know that we need to be able to have capacity for more. I don't think it has to stay a 75 kids school. I think it could go to like a Dreyfus level, which is closer, I think right now we're at 1300, 1400, 1400 students. So I think it could go up to that level and you could still have the fidelity of this program. I don't think the smallness matters. I think it's the quality of the instruction that matters and the culture that matters. And I think we have to start listening to our families and, and spreading it somewhere. Um, I'd like to see this space remain a K-8. Thank you. Ms. Brill. Thank you. So at a future meeting, not now, I'd like to have a board discussion on project-based learning because as the superintendent knows, um, I was exposed to it through my daughter who teaches in Brazil. I'm hearing that it, it really is the wave of the future in integrating education. And it's been very successful, particularly in smaller schools. So I'd like to talk about that. But what I want to talk about right now is we need to find a way to get this done. And Forget about the DOE approval. You know that in my district, the middle school has not been approved. I've been keeping my community quiet. They're going to erupt one day. Um, so we're going to have to find an answer because we have terribly overcrowded middle schools and now no place to put the children because we closed Odyssey. So that, that to me, we have to find a way to think out of the box. And so now I'm in, in, totally intrigued by the possible solutions. I think they're great and right on. I didn't even think about it until I heard it here. But I went to a high school where I was in their first school within a school. And it really is a model where if we have some place that's under-enrolled, a school that's under-enrolled could work very, very well. And um, we really felt you know, our learning experience was unique, and yet we got to share the campus with those in the regular program. And you know, there's certain things like you know, PE that you would do together and lunch, but it was, it was a fabulous experience for us. And then the other thing is repurposing. So where I agree with Ms. Whitfield, we don't have to look at cramming everybody on the same campus, but I would like to get a commitment tonight that we're gonna find a way to get it done. Um, I do like both possible solutions. I think you're thinking out of the box and I appreciate it because I just don't see DOE going along with any plans for us to build, especially when I'm living in an area that's overpopulated and they're telling West Boynton that you can bus your children to Del Rey, to East Del Rey or to Riviera Beach. So the likelihood of them allowing us to build new it's, it's probably just not there, but let's find a way to get it done so that these students can continue. So, I, I'm next, so I'll take it um, until Mr. Barbieri gets back. Um, there are a few items that I think we need to consider. One of them is, um, as staff did the analysis of this, was there consideration of the impact that teachers, and I think that Dr. Okada talked a little bit about it, the fact that teachers may be having to teach multiple um, planning um, issues where they may have to do several preps. And right now, 
the situation may be good at the school where a teacher's willing to do four or five preps, but at some point in time, that could sour real quick and we'd end up in a real problem. So I have a real major concern of a small high school and even beginning to address that because I think that opens up lots of problems that we haven't addressed. Um, I think there should be also consideration to third option. I didn't see anything or hear anything that said that, uh, what about just opening a program similar to this in one of our existing high schools? Why do we need to move it and relocate it if this, if this program can be replicated? And that really is a big issue for me, is whether or not the board needs to, this is really a policy decision. Right now we're talking about one school, a small group of, of students, where this has implications absolutely countywide on every school. And I think that the decision we make needs to be based upon um, what's good policy on this for the whole district. Are boutique schools the direction we want to go? And what are the implications of this? And the other one is that I really do have a major concern about the fact that this, this model and the location of adding, uh, the co-locating on the same campus uh, by adding facilities is going to restrict so much uh, the K-8 program that's in that school and um, could create problems in the future. Thank you. Mrs. McQuinn. I had so many things on my mind I forgot when I raised my hand, but they will come up as I get to them. Um, the first is that there is good research about student academic achievement, but going back to they feel involved when they're doing true project-based learning. And I've told many um, of, I don't know, people. I'm, I'm so, I have so many things I want to say. But anyway, I've told so many people that, um, at, particularly at the elementary and middle grades, the International Baccalaureate it insists that you have project-based, inquiry-based learning. But I'm going to be the first to tell you, I don't think we do that with integrity. Not the programs that I have visited. Way back when we bought the, brought the first program to Palm Beach County and I was an assistant principal at Suncoast when we opened the school, we truly had, I mean, I conducted the, the learning teams that were comprised of the um, academic teachers. We put, the, we put ourselves in the place of being a student and what's happening to me. So, but really, we have not done true, we've done as I forgot one of the speakers said, we've done projects, but we haven't done true project-based learning. And I think we are very much missing the boat if we don't follow up with that. Um, I also have told the superintendent, and I promise you this is not a predictor of anything, but I have said to the superintendent in the past, and I said it to Dr. Avosa in the past, that. Whatever Terry Stupas builds, you know, build it and they'll come. Whatever Terry Stupas builds, people are going to come. That's just the history. So I'm, I'm throwing that piece out there. To, and yesterday, when I will tell you, when I visited the school and I saw, I haven't seen the middle school yet. I've only seen the middle school at night with um, project pre presentations. But the, um, but the elementary school, I'll tell you, zero students were unengaged. I mean, zero. I don't typically look at what's happening with the teachers in a classroom. I look at what's happening with the kids. They were engaged. And the teacher was with kids. It was amazing. I mean, everyone. And I'm not telling you we don't have that across our district. We certainly do. But this was like 100% of the teachers were with kids. And when the few would come up to the teacher, I think they were all female in this. Hmm, interesting. Um, sorry, I told you, stream of consciousness. I just have to do it. Um, but the kids, a few kids came up and they had a question. And the teacher was so respectful in saying, would you just give me a minute? Because she was talking to me. Um, and every student knew she was, the teacher was going to get back to them. So it's an incredible model. And it has to be replicated. Whatever happens with this particular situation, it happens. The board and the superintendent will decide. It's the first time we've been able to talk to each other. Um, but 
we have, I just know, you know, we're so good. I mean, look how high performing we are as a district. This can be that next step. So um, one other thing that I don't think I heard, because you know I was making my own comments as we went along, um, so I'll ask the superintendent, did we include what can be an immediate answer next year for our string students at the conservatory school? Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, uh, a parent came to us um, a couple of months ago and asked about that. And so one of the things that we were able to do, the deputy superintendent made a recommendation to me that we add a strings allocation at Gardens High School so that they, so they can begin developing that program. So while we figure all of this out, there is that option on the north end for our students to go to. And, we, and I approved that about a month ago. Thank you, and I now yield my time. Dr. Robinson. So we're talking about a lot of things. So first, let me say, I'm waiting for us to have our choice workshop because some of this fits into that, the big picture of options based on children's needs. Um, <clears throat> and so we're talking about not just facility, we're also talking about programming, right? So, okay, I, let me, I tried to write this down so I wouldn't stray, but let me just say, so, so I have three sons and you may or may not know that I ended up on the school board after advocating for my children. And, and I would teacher shop, right? I would shop, actually I was in private practice, and I would shop the teachers that I had as patients um, to find the ones who could see the gifts and talents that my, whichever son I was talking about brought to the table because like their mother, they're nonconformist. Okay? Now, <clears throat> and so, and actually, when I was writing this down, I was going to name some of those teachers, but I will forget one, so I shouldn't do that. Uh, but I could tell you this, um, and I don't know how the conservatory school got on my individual radar, but I know Terry Stupis. Terry Stupis was, I'm going to call her the savior at Bach, right? Um, because sometimes the culture at Bach was not so inviting, but she was the one who would see the child and their gifts and would validate them and redirect them. And I will continue to thank her for my two sons whose lives she touched. And so, <clears throat> you know, I, I met with some of the parents um, and, and these outstanding students. I just applaud you guys, okay? Um, so I met with them and I tried to type up my notes and I shared my notes. The, the one thing that I want to say, one of the teachers that spoke then said, we see race, okay? I cannot tell you how big that is, right? While so many people walk around and try to act like we're all like some non-racial identity, they see race. And guess what? They see the individual, right? And so <clears throat> one of my sons who had Terry Stupis as his assistant principal, I talked to him into touring the conservatory a year and a half ago or something, whenever it was after it got on my radar and after I had visited the school um, and after I had visited High Tech High. Um, and he toured the school and he moved. He moved from St. Lucie County so his children could have a chance at attending that school. So not only did he vote with his words, he voted with his mortgage, okay? I'm just telling you, that's what is at that school. And so now my little nonconformist grandchildren <laughs> have the opportunity to be seen for who they are, right? And so, you know, as the students were talking, I mean, I just lost, I just sat here and had my own little personal moments um, of pride and joy and flashing back on the fights that I had sitting there fighting with the people up here for the ones I gave birth to. And now to know 
that there's this opportunity for children to have this experience um, where they are, they're nurtured and they're validated. And so what I want for my grandchildren is what I want for all children, right? And I want to be clear about this, okay? I see you twisting up Wanda Paul, but I'm just telling you, okay? See, I read her body language. I just want you to know. So, um, and it should not be a unicorn to use Ms. Whitfield's words. And so while we're working to address this high school problem, which I think we must, right? I want to be clear. One of the best things I think Dr. Avosa ever said to me was the concept of birthing. That was the phrase he would use, birthing additional conservatories, right? And so I want this for my grandchildren. I want this for children whose names I don't know. And so, which means I know we are taking these little baby steps at Village Academy and at North Moore, right, to do project-based learning. I think we need to expand that. And what that means to the board is allocation of funds for professional development. Because Terry Stoop is not only does she bring the people that she knows who are outstanding, she interviews. How how you get somebody who's like a clinical social worker to come and teach? Like, come on, really? How you do that, right? But anyway, and then she develops them almost in this lifestyle of acknowledging children for who they are and bringing them and their talents to the table of learning, okay? That's not something, we're not just gonna pay a program for that, right? We're gonna to have to invest in professional development to make these programs grow. And so after, as we do this and invest in professional development for the schools that are already in the queue, I would ask that we would look at additional schools because we need to have the opportunity throughout the county for children, for elementary and for middle, and yes, for high school, right? Now in my head, since we talk about the, the feeder patterns and all that, um, I, we need to really make sure that we're looking at additional middle school seats elsewhere, because that's not enough middle school seats, because it looked like 550 kids in elementary aren't able to go to middle school, right? So, I mean, we need to spread this thing, and I don't know how we structure it. I have my ideas, of course, which I won't put on the public record right now, but we need to, to grow this thing, right? Um, but. So I, and so as we talk about the high school, I just don't want this growth of elementary and middle to get lost in this conversation. So I'm, I think that the options that you put on the table are worth exploring. I think we must come up with a solution. It's gonna require um, a lot of creative thought and community input. Um, but I just, I just wanna say what I want for my grandchildren, I want for everybody's child as much as possible. So. It's not just about this high school building. Thank you. Mrs. Andrews. Thank you, and I think <clears throat> our, the board members have really said it, but when I look out and I see these students, that you have been the best advocates for the best education that you're getting at the conservatory. You know, I've had a chance to meet uh, Mrs. Stupas, and I saw you uh, when you received the award from the Florida School Board Association of your program that you have at the school. When we start talking about project-based learning, we as a board need that workshop, Ms. Brill, and we need to go and see some of the models across the state and across the country. I think when we look at what you've gotten, students, I wanna see every student in Palm Beach County get this. I'm an out-of-the-box person. I love the possible solutions, but I believe we can add on to that. The state is rigid, but when we talk about student achievement, student learning, students' growth, parents, you're powerful. You can help us to make that happen. Yes, it does cost money, and there are project, pro, uh, uh, prospects that we have to look at that are doable and maybe not doable, but nothing stands in the way of educating our children and when I look at what we're trying to do here, we've got to make it happen. And one of my mottos is always saying to our students, 
to our community, to our parents. Let's get it done. We already have a model here. We have success here. When we look at all the students in Palm Beach County, almost 200,000 students, we need to make sure we do a better job in getting the best education possible for them, just like the students that we see right here that's getting it at the conservatory. Thank you. So I guess I'm last. You're all done. Um, you are all prior. Most of you are prior educators. i not. Um, so I agree. I don't know enough about project-based learning, but I sure as heck want to learn. So um, the superintendent's indicated we'll get that under our belt here soon. Um, there's two things that I'm concerned about. After, after a year of lobbying for a new high school, a new middle school, and a new elementary school for our district, talking to our lobbyists in Tallahassee almost daily for weeks, talking to senators, state representatives, um, we only luckily got them to waive the rule that they look at the entire district for capacity needs. Um, and, they, and they finally realized that maybe, which they haven't really formulated, but maybe they should regionalize Palm Beach County so that we can look at the south, the east, the west, the central, the north, and figure out if we have capacity in the Glades area it doesn't necessarily mean we don't need a new school in Riviera Beach because it's miles away to transport the kids. And luckily, you know, somebody came to their senses in Tallahassee and approved a high school for us and an elementary school for us, but they did not approve a middle school for us. So what I'm major concerned with is after going through this for a year, listening to parents scream about there was no room for their kids in the schools, I don't want us to jeopardize the project that we have on the books in our capital plan to increase the size of Jupiter High School. Any additional classrooms we build for high school students, we have to, at the parents, it was, you know, there was a reference to this earlier, but in order for us to build a new classroom, we have to ask the state's permission. Uh, we can't just do it on our own. We're, we have to go ask them if they allow us to do it, and they look at whether we have capacity in the other areas. If, if we were able to find the money and we were able to get them to agree to let us build high school classrooms at that location, which I don't think is feasible, what I heard today, and, but I'm not... Now, I'm not downplaying the idea that we should find another place to do this. Um, they'll never approve both. They would never give us new classrooms at high school at Jupiter or new classroom, high school classrooms at, at the conservatory. They just won't do it. I just went through it. I know they won't do it. They're, they're just too, too close to each other for them to do that. So, I mean, so we can't, we can't look at a place where we're going to build additional high school classrooms. We have to, if we're going to look at a school to put this in, we're going to have to find a school that has classrooms currently available and then we use those classrooms to house the high school, uh, the school in school uh, thing that you all were talking about. And the other thing is the cost. I mean, we lobby very successfully for the sales tax, and that sales tax money was set aside for very, very specific items and it's all itemized on our website we know exactly how much we have and where we can spend it and nowhere in there was there ever talk about adding another high school at the conservatory and i'm not saying that's not a great idea i'm not trying to downplay the, the importance of what you all have taught me today but um we just we just would have to find the money i mean it's millions of dollars to add high school classrooms and it's not in our budget i mean it's we're just now getting to the point where we can borrow money to build uh, you know, new, new school, but um, we don't have the capacity to, at this point to borrow much more, and we certainly don't have it in the sales tax revenue, which has all been absolutely identified where it's got to go, and that's basically take care of 10 years of problems that we didn't have the money to fix, and that they're now, the, you know, that, that have to be fixed. The referendum money that we were luckily, that the, 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 the taxpayers, you know, approved recently, we can't use a dime of that for the, something like this. All, that money is allocated for Security, which is one of the most important things that this board has to consider at the moment, is how to make sure our children are absolutely safe in their classrooms. And teachers, we, every year we hire between 1,000 and 1,400 teachers. Within the first five years, 50% of those teachers are gone because we don't have enough money to pay them so they can stay here and work here and live here in this county because it's too expensive. So the, the voters realize that. So that money is already allocated for teachers, security, mental health professionals to make sure that 
you know, that we don't have any repeat of some of the horrible things that have happened around the country uh, and most recently in Broward County. So um, I agree, Mr. Superintendent, we need to have, you know, some workshops on this as soon as possible. You, uh, we all, I think you heard the board loud and clear. We'd like you to go back and find out how we can get this program that, so these kids that are currently at the middle school can move on to a high school program somewhere in the area. Uh, I don't know if that's in a, a, a current middle school we have or you put it over. I don't know where you're going to find it, but I'll leave that up to your staff. You, Mrs. Paul seems to work miracles all the time, so um, we'll call on another miracle for Mrs. Paul to figure out how we can get this done. But I think, I think all of us agree that it's a, it's, a great, it's a great program, and we need to find a way to fix it. And I don't know how you're going to have Mrs. Stupas. Maybe you can you know, do that one of those on Star Trek where you kind of beam her back and forth between the two schools, or you're going to have to see if we can clone her. I think they clone now in England, so maybe we can get another Mrs. Stupas somehow. But um, we're going to have to find, you know, we're going to have to find a talent, too, to run that program that runs it the same as, uh, as she does at that school if we find a, a place to put it. So um, your task is uh, cut out for you, so go get it done. Yeah. So I'll say this. I think one, I have to just um, say to the to the entire family at the conservatory, not only do I appreciate it, but this is the sort of community engagement that we desire to have. Um, if there was anything that was done wrong in this process, is this process should have been done a year ago. That's that's what the problem of all of this is. We should have been having this dialogue. The board should have been given an opportunity for us as a staff to go present the pros and cons, et cetera, et cetera, so that we could have been further along. So now we're kind of starting, we're starting at ground zero right now just because of many of the things the board has mentioned. So there, there are, there's no doubt in my mind. And you know, one of the things I think upset me that, you know, I would get these, you know, interesting emails. Um, no one was ever questioning the fidelity and how wonderful the K-8 program was. I don't know why people thought I was like getting rid of the whole school. That was, that's wrong. Um, so it's, it's been very clear that not only is this school doing great, Terry's doing a great job, but I also don't want us to, to I, want to, I want us to understand that Terry was just really, you know, responding to what the leadership at that time was doing. And so, no, no, there's no ill will there, but we're at a place now, we're moving forward. We have many, many projects to get done. And, and, and Mr. Barbieri and other board members have said across time, Ms. Paul is amazing, but she's, you know, she's doing the best she can. But now we're in a position as a staff where we go back, take the recommendations from the board and we see what we can do. So over the next couple of, months because there's a lot to figure out like we, we still have our current capital plan projects moving forward we still have all the other things that are happening so now the question i think was going to i think dr robinson or someone said we may comp what well, may cause it we're going to have to have community conversations about if not on that current site then where and what does that look like and so for the public it is it is not and I, i've done this in other districts it's not easy to close schools and say we're going to let you, we're going to close you and bring someone else in. So you know, parents may not say nothing now until we get we go to show up to say, hey, we're closing your school to add another school. like that. Those are all things that we have to work through. I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing because it's hard, and that's all you can do is laugh when you're getting treated like that. Uh, so we understand that this is not, this is going to be a slow walk, and I want to make sure we get it right. But there's no doubt in my mind. We will be doing, you know, Mr. Oswald, we will be doing a pr um, presentation to the board and the community about project-based learning. Many of us as principals have done that in our schools. And let's be, let me be clear, I think Mr. Barbarian were talking today. There's a lot of project-based learning going on in Palm Beach County. You know, we have th over 300 career and choice programs. That is called project-based learning. They are participating in something as part of their educational experience, whether it's automotive, whether it's music, what you, I mean, you name it. This is Pete LaCotte and his team have built one of the most robust choice programs in the country. So it is happening. I think, you know, but one of the things from hearing the community and, and having lunch with the chair today, maybe we're not doing a good enough job helping people understand exactly what it is. And so I think that's a part for the communications team and the choice team to figure out how to further educate the community about what's available. So I hear everybody loud and clear. We will do those, we will do all of those um, workshops and we will explore what options are available. But let me say this for the record, there's no way I can have this in place by August of this year. This is just gonna take too long for us to totally figure out because as the, one of the parents said, and I think some board members said, there's still, there's still an existing school that we cannot put in the predicament where we have kids eating so early. I mean, those are things that I wasn't aware of until they just presented. So we have a lot to figure out as it relates to the current. I don't wanna compromise the great things that are happening today, trying to squeeze a bunch more into that space. 
Mrs. Brill. Thank you. And listening to the superintendent's comments, I realized I need to modify what I said. I'm not really going to be interested in repurposing schools. I'm going to be interested in the school within a school, and I'll tell you why. We repurposed, we're repurposing Odyssey Middle School. We closed that school down without anyone saying to us as a board that there was a chance that we could not build that middle school by Sunset Palms. And now I've got a school that's actually, I've got a couple of schools that are bursting at the seams with middle school students, and there's no light at the end of the tunnel. The Department of Education said no. Would I have sat here, even though I love South Tech Academy, would I have sat here and said that school buses were more important than students and closed that school down to repurpose it had I been told there was a chance that there'd be no place for those children to go? Absolutely not. But we can't go backwards. We have to learn from what we've gone through and what our experience is. So before we ever discuss repurposing a school, I want to guarantee that those children are going to have a place to go. Thank you. Mrs. Andrews. And thank you. And in starting this conversation today with my fellow board members and everybody in here, especially the students, it is going to have to be a community conversation. We know it's going to take funding, and this is the time that maybe we can bring together some businesses to help us with some funding here. We know the state is only going to give us so much. So we've got to come out of the box and figure out ways on how we can get some more partners that will work with us. This must be done, especially for the conservatory, but for all of Palm Beach County. We've got a lot of uh, Projects-based learning, uh, Dr. Fanoi here, I want to go and see it. I've seen the things that happen at the conservatory. I want to make sure that all students can get this type of learning. When they come here and say, we must have this, parents saying that we must have this, especially students, we've got to make it happen, and we've got to make it happen at a big level so all students can participate. But some business partnerships may be another conversation that we need to have and ga gathering some financial support. Thank you, then in closing, um, I, on behalf of the board, I wanna thank all the parents and, that are here today. I mean, we've had difficult situations in the past where we were booed and there was cat calls, and I, I just appreciate the fact how respectful you've been uh, while you listen to our administration tell us what's going on and your comments, and I received lots of emails and you were very courteous in your emails, and I appreciate that, and I'm sure my colleagues appreciate the, the 10, you know, the tone of, your, of your, your, your comments and your emails. So thank you for being respectful and we'll do what we, uh, we can to make sure that uh, the, the things that you would like to happen, happen. Thank you. Thanks guys. Um, at this, well Mike, you can stay at the table. Um, speaking of money, we will now bring